Hello and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church Online. This week in worship, Pastor Dana continues our series on the prophets as she looks at Amos and the plumb line. Let's listen. This week, as David just mentioned, we are continuing on with our sermon series titled Walking in Their Shoes. And this has been a great series. It's been a great way for us to imagine what life is like for someone who is vastly different from us. To imagine what life is like for some of the people that wore these shoes up here on this wall. To imagine what some of the life experiences and the struggles are that some of the oppressed and vulnerable populations have faced. This week, as we explore, yes, this time as we explore this sermon series of walking in someone else's shoes, we've also been looking at a different prophet each week and the wisdom that the prophets have to share with us. Oftentimes, the prophets were speaking up for the oppressed populations, the vulnerable populations in a community. They were giving voice to the voiceless, and they were helping to shed light on the injustice that was occurring in a community. They were calling people to action, calling nations of people to change their behavior This week, as we explore a different prophet, I wanted us to take a look at the prophet Amos, to explore what Amos was shedding light on, what he was calling people to do, a little bit of background information about Amos. Amos was a shepherd. He was known as being an intense person. He had a fierce sense of integrity. Oftentimes, Amos harshly criticized others and reprimanded those who were not doing what they were supposed to be doing, who weren't living the way that God had outlined for them to live. Amos harshly criticized the inhabitants of Israel and Judah, whose lives were characterized by corruption and social injustice. Amos believed that God's sovereignty over man called for social justice for all people, that the rich and the poor should all be treated the same. Amos believed and openly shared that even God's chosen people, the Israelites, weren't exempt from treating people equally and fairly, and if they failed to do so, then they would have to pay the penalty as well. Amos believed in and asserted a type of moral order that he felt transcended nationalistic and political interests. And because of this code of conduct, because of this moral order that he believed in, it shaped what he prophesied about. For instance, in Amos chapter 7, Amos had a vision from God, where a plumb line is being referenced. God tells Amos how this plumb line is to serve as a measuring stick or a moral compass. Amos chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Then he showed me another vision. I saw the Lord standing beside a wall that had been built using a plumb line. He was using a plumb line to see if it was still straight. And the Lord said to me, Amos, What do you see? I answered, a plumb line. And the Lord replied, I will test my people with this plumb line. I will no longer ignore all their sins. In this vision, the plumb line is referenced as a tool to measure a person's conduct. That is the moral compass that God was going to employ in order to determine if people were living correctly or if they were living in a sinful manner. So this plumb line that's being referenced is a measuring stick. It measures a person's behavior, their moral conduct. Now all of this talk about a plumb line, it got me wondering what a plumb line actually is. 
Out of all the projects that I have done with my father, he has never asked me to go and get him a plumb line. This is not something that we hear referenced very often. So what does a plumb line look like? What is, it, what is a plumb line? What does it do? Well, here is a picture of a plumb line. This is an old school plumb line. This is a more current image. This next one. So this is a more current image of a plumb line, and you can start to see maybe what a plumb line actually does. You can start to infer what a plumb line does. A plumb line helps with the development of a building or a structure. It helps whoever is building the structure so that they can have straight lines, 90 degree angles, straight walls, so that the building can stand upright, it can stand tall and erect. Or to give you a more accurate and definitive description, a plumb line is also called a plumb bob or a plummet. It's a cord with a non-magnetic weight attached to an end. When the cord is held in such a way that the weight can freely dangle, the weight pulls that line taut and an exact vertical line can be determined. Painters and carpenters use plumb lines to keep their work straight. A plumb line applies the law of gravity to find right angles, to indicate the most direct route from top to bottom, therefore, to keep things plumb, hence the name plumb line. It is difficult when you are in the middle of a project to determine a true horizontal or vertical line without an objective measuring tool. So that's why the plumb line is used. What is important to note is that a plumb line doesn't change or move with the whims of a carpenter. It remains true and all work must line up or else it's in jeopardy of being crooked. Here is a picture. You can see this structure where a plumb line was definitely used. You can see 90 degree angles, straight lines. Everything looks crisp and sharp. Everything is plumb. Here's a picture where someone perhaps wasn't using a plumb line. <laughs> Now, most people would argue that the Leaning Tower of Pisa is tilted to one side because of a foundational issue. But if you put the Leaning Tower of Pisa next to another structure that doesn't have foundational issues and was most certainly built with a plumb line, you can start to see a pretty big difference. It's quite a striking difference. Plumb lines have been used for the longest time. The earliest known time was when they were building the pyramids in ancient Egypt. As Christians, we hear references to this plumb line all throughout Scripture. In the book of Zechariah, there's a plumb line that is referenced. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10 says, Whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Isaiah chapter 28 also references a plumb line. In that chapter, the prophet Isaiah highlights what it means for the Israelites that God will be using a plumb line. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 17 says, As the Lord builds his kingdom, he will ensure it is perfect in every way. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. So we know and trust that plumb lines have been around for quite some time. And there seems to be a common theme as to what it meant when God said he was going to use a plumb line. There's a central message that is consistently being asserted with this plumb line illustration. When God said that he was going to set a plumb line amongst his people, he was oftentimes declaring an end to the way that people were living. He was setting a standard for how people should be acting and interacting with others. When God employed this image of the plumb line, 
It was a means to remind folks that crookedness was not acceptable in the kingdom of God. That people were not to act and interact with others in a crooked or unfair way or in a selfish or self-centered way where they were solely focused on material gain. God was reminding his people that they were to live in such a way where all God's people were treated fairly, where they were treated with dignity and respect. Back when Amos was prophesying, it was during the years of 783 to 746 B.C., and during this time, there was a lot of peace and prosperity in the ancient world. King Jeroboam II was the king during this time, and he was a very popular king. He oversaw territorial expansion. There was an active and aggressive military There was a lot of economic prosperity. But Amos argued that Israel was going in the wrong direction, that they were achieving these things through the wrong means. Amos chapter 5 verse 12 says, For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribes, and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. The prophet Amos, he spent his years reminding folks that there was a standard to live up to. That when God looked around and saw evidence of plumb lines in their buildings, in their homes, and in their temples, that he expected to see evidence of plumb lines in their lives. However, when God held up this plumb line next to the people of Israel to judge their straightness, to judge their character, God was not impressed. The people who had learned to use the plumb line so well to build these temples and their structures, they had forgotten to use a plumb line to build themselves, to build their character, to build their community to build their relationships with one another. So with this plumb line outstretched in front of the people of God, he could very clearly see that his people had failed to use an instrument or a tool to ground their efforts upward, heavenward. They had failed to set a standard as to how they treated one another. Instead, they continued to oppress the oppressed. They continued to accept bribes. Their lives were characterized by greed. So what God meant when he said, I'm going to set a plumb line amongst my people, was that he would determine if their actions were straight and fair and just. And if there was crookedness, then God was going to destroy it. Amos chapter 7, verse 9, it says, The pagan shrines of your ancestors will be ruined. The temples of Israel will be destroyed. I will bring the dynasty of King Jeroboam to a sudden end. If there was crookedness, God was going to make it straight again. He was going to make the high places desolate. He was going to level the playing field, so to speak, so that everyone was treated fairly and equally, so that there was no longer corruption and selfish gain. He was going to demolish that which had become crooked. Essentially, God wanted to start over from the ground up, where the way that God treated his people would be the standard that his people fashioned their lives after. That the way that God treated all his people with love and grace would be the expectation and the norm. That would be their new code of conduct, their new moral order. It would be their new plumb line. So what does all of this mean for us? How do the prophet Amos' words nearly 2,000 years ago still resonate with us present day? 
Well, I think that it is rather apparent that even in our present day and age, there are still people that are oppressed. There are still pockets of people that are vulnerable, that don't have the same opportunities that we do. We still fail to treat all people fairly at times, and the same across the board. We're still harsh and critical and judgmental of others. For instance, many years ago when Obama was in office, Obama put into motion a plan to help assist the homeless a little bit more. He provided anyone who was homeless with a cell phone. This was freely given to them. It was part of the Lifeline program. This program was intended to help the homeless people connect with other people a little bit easier. That if someone was homeless, that they could still call a potential employer and set up an interview. That if they weren't going to be able to show up to work one day, that they would be able to call out of work. This cell phone was available so that they could just call their friends or a loved one. This is very basic stuff. Stuff that we have access to that we never think twice about. I think my brother was six years old when he had his first cell phone. For someone who is homeless, they oftentimes don't have access to a consistent and secure phone line. So it makes it impossible for a potential employer to call them and say, we're going to hire you. Here's the hours that we need you to show up. It makes it impossible for them to conduct just day-to-day business. This phone, this program, it was aimed at leveling the playing field, so to speak, so that everyone had access to this very basic privilege. Well, a lot of people were unaware of this phone and this program, and oftentimes, I would hear people say when they saw someone living on the street and they had a phone in their hand that they weren't going to offer them assistance. I would hear people say all the time that if they could afford this luxury, then that they didn't need a warm meal that day. They didn't need money out of their pocket since they could have access to this privilege and this luxury. It was as if this cell phone determined whether or not somebody was worthy of assistance, whether or not a passerby would assist them and give them money out of their pocket so that they had food for a day. The cell phone was the indicator. It was the measuring stick for whether or not a person would receive the love and grace and assistance that they needed. The cell phone that was freely given to them just so that they could perform some of the very basic functions and tasks in life. This is just one example of how we can very easily fall short at times in treating people fairly and equally. How we can fall victim to judging others instead of helping them how we can very easily perpetuate oppression instead of leveling the playing field. We can be quick to form judgments, preconceived notions at times, instead of maintaining a posture of love and grace. And we don't mean to do this. And oftentimes we are very good at pushing down those judgments and those critiques But hard as we might try, they still creep in from time to time. And that is why it's so important to remember this plumb line that the prophet Amos spoke about. To do a little self-check from time to time. To put those judgments in check that sometimes creep in. To set a plumb line next to them. And to ask ourselves, is this God's standard for how I am to interact with other people? Is this who God calls me to be? How God calls me to treat other people? For centuries, people have built these large, magnificent structures. Huge pyramids. 
elaborate and beautiful cathedrals. For centuries, we have created these well-built, magnificent structures, but we have not always behaved in a well-built, magnificent way. For centuries, the plumb line that, of people's hearts and of people's lives has oftentimes been characterized by greed, selfish ambition, condemnation of other people. This continues to happen today. The words of the prophet Amos, they still have relevancy in our present day and age. The words of this prophet, they still call us to action present day. They ask us to set aside our crookedness, to make our ways straight again, to set a plumb line in our hearts and minds where our character and our interactions are pointed upward, they're pointed heavenward, where we're using God's standard of conduct as our plumb line, in which we treat all others with the same love and grace that God possesses for all people. Amen. If you would like more information about Unity Presbyterian Church, please visit our website at www.unitypres.org or visit us on Facebook. This is the Unity Presbyterian Church Podcast. Have a great week.